Hello there and welcome back to the geodynamics video lectures on flexure of the lithosphere. In the fourth lecture in this series, we're going to now look at what's termed flexure of the lithosphere. And this is to make a distinction between what we had looked at previously, which was simply flexure of an elastic plate. And we'll talk about the big difference here. Um, basically, that is how displacement of the asthenosphere affects our formulation of elastic plate deflection. So what do we mean? Well, if we look at the picture in the context of the Earth, we can think of a kind of simplified view of either an oceanic lithosphere or a continental lithosphere where we might have the free surface here, some thickness of water sitting atop the oceanic lithosphere, and then some oceanic lithosphere of thickness H sitting atop a fluid mantle with its own density. The continental crust would be a similar scenario where we have just some thickness of continental crust to top the mantle lithosphere, and the mantle lithosphere has a thickness of H, and then it's sitting again on top of a fluid mantle or the asthenosphere. So previously we had been looking at plates that were just floating in space. Now we're going to put them on top of a fluid and see what happens when we load the plate and actually displace the fluid beneath the plate. Why does that matter? Well, if you look at this lower case of the example of the oceanic lithosphere, we have some line load QA that's pushing down in the middle of this lithospheric plate, and it's of course deflecting the plate as a result. When you push that plate down though, everything that's beneath this dashed line is an area that has displaced the mantle or the asthenosphere because of the deflection of the lithosphere. And if you look at what happens up here, in that place where, <coughs> where the um, plate has been deflected, we've actually filled in the void above the plate with water. So we have a relatively low density fluid water, and it's displacing the relatively higher density fluid um, that being the asthenosphere, and so that results in what's called a hydrostatic restoring force that's going to tend to push the deflected plate back up to its original undeflected position. And the same thing applies for the continents, of course. So if we look again at this picture in a little bit more detail, what we can do for our oceanic lithosphere case, again, now this is just shown on the left side, we have some load, a line load again, that's indicated as QA acting in the middle of this um, piece of the oceanic lithosphere, and you can see it's deflected by up to a maximum of uh, W here in the middle, and it varies along the length as we would expect. If we took a column of the weight of the material from the position where the maximum deflection has occurred, what we would see is that we have um, the density of water times the acceleration due to gravity times the thickness of this water above the lithosphere in this case. So that's going to be HW, which was the height or thickness of the water originally, plus the deflection. So that takes us down to this point where we're sitting on top of the lithosphere. And then plus the density of the mantle times G times H. And H is the thickness of the plate in this case. The density of the mantle is used here, of course, because this is the mantle lithosphere that we're in. So we should use the mantle density. So all of our terms are basically defined there. If we took the corresponding weight somewhere over here where there's been no deflection, but down at the same depth, what we would see is that we have rho of water times G times HW. So that's simply this thickness of water sitting here, plus the mantle density times G times H, which is the plate thickness, plus that bit of deflection. And so what you can see already is that down here, at this depth, the pressure is relatively high compared to the pressure that we have over here. Anytime we've got a pressure gradient in a fluid, that's going to drive the fluid to flow towards the area of low pressure. In this case, then it's going to want to push the deflected part of the lithosphere back up. We can say basically the same thing here by doing this force uh, calculation. So here we've just basically put together the different terms from the previous slide. So here's our um, 
rho g h w, so that's the thickness of water in the undeflected case, plus rho m times g times h plus w, so this is our undeflected piece over here, down at the thickness where, um, or down at the position where there's been no deflection, and then we subtract from that the weight of the column in the middle, and uh, that's where we have deflection, we filled in the void with ocean water, and you can see the difference you come up with there basically comes down to mantle density minus the density of water times g times the deflection. Okay, so that's relatively simple. And so effectively then what we can do is we can modify our load because in the middle now the load that's acting is actually QA that's applied minus this restoring force. Okay, so then that's going to apply um, as well along the length of this plate. So we're going to modify our relationship before um, that we had for the plate deflection, which was the flexural rigidity times the fourth derivative of the deflection with respect to x, plus p, that was the longitudinal force, times the second derivative of deflection with respect to x. Now we're adding this extra term in here where we have our density difference times g times the deflection is equal to the line load q of a, or in this case q of a actually could vary along the length. It doesn't necessarily need to be a line load. It could be any load acting along the top of the um, elastic plate. You could do exactly the same thing for continental lithosphere, and the only difference is going to be that your density difference calculation is going to contain rho m minus rho c, the density of continental crust, instead of the density of, um, of water. Otherwise, this is exactly the same as the previous um, slide. All right, so now we're in a position where we've calculated how a, an elastic plate will be deflected by various loads, and we've accounted for the fact that by pushing the asthenosphere away from where this plate is being deflected, we're going to have a force that's going to be generated that's basically trying to restore that deflection. And we're going to take a look at uh, an example from Hawaii, and we'll look in detail actually in the next, uh, in the final um, video lecture, but here we're just going to kind of get the preview of what we will be looking at. As you have probably seen already several times now, this is a simple kind of cross-sectional view of uh, Oahu, and so you can see the bathymetry along the ocean floor coming up to the island of Oahu and then dropping back down. This is the volcanic edifice of that island. We know that acts as a load in the middle of the oceanic lithosphere, deflecting it downward, so we can use um, some of our equations that apply for the case of a load with um, in the oceanic lithosphere. Now, when we look at that, we have basically two different options, and so that's what we're going to look at in the next lecture, um, the two ways that we can model this deflection. Then they're slightly different and kind of have slightly different geological um, implications, but we're going to basically be treating this load of the volcanic edifice as a line load acting um, on the lithosphere, and we're going to assume that the, um, the sort of load along the top of the plate is zero and that the um, loading along the longitudinal axis is also zero. So in that case, we can then simplify our equation to look something like this, and that's what we'll go on to solve in the um, following lecture. So just to make note of it here, um, you can see still we have our flexural rigidity times the fourth derivative of the, uh, with respect to the x-axis. The term that drops out is that longitudinal load term that has a p um, times the second derivative of the uh, displacement along the x-axis. And then you can see in here our dif density difference between the mantle and water and then that's going to be set equal to zero because we have no uh, load along the top of the plate. So that, again, that's a preview for the final um, video lecture that's coming up. The one thing I wanted to point out here is um, that, you know, this is a, something that can be observed even from the kind of macroscopic scale from stepping way back. So we're looking here at bathymetry uh, in the Pacific Ocean. And you can see, labeled here, the peripheral bulge. This is an area that's warped up uh, around the load of the Hawaiian 
island chain, which you can see running along here like this. Um, you can see that there's an upwarped area here called the peripheral bulge and a depression that's right near the islands where we have the maximum amount of deflection of the oceanic lithosphere. If you go back here to this um, picture of the cross section to the island of Oahu, you can see this upwarped area here on both sides. It's called the peripheral bulge, and then there's a depression as you get closer to the uh, volcanic edifice itself. And so we'll take a look at that stuff in a little bit more detail in the following video lecture. All right, so it's quiz time. Go ahead and take your quiz, and um, I'll see you for the final lecture on the flexure of the lithosphere, where we look at the case of flexure near the islands of Hawaii.